I'm Narelle Todd. And I'm Essie Susan Smith. We are the self-publishing author and marketing duo that has sold over 2 million books. But we didn't start out knowing how to sell books. Fast forward past many failed promotions and a lot of lessons learned, you will see how we went from self-publishing newbies to hitting the New York Times bestsellers list and making the USA Today bestsellers list 19 times and counting. We created the Get My Book Out There podcast to give you simple yet effective marketing strategies to increase readership and book sales so you know what to do, when to do it, and how to do it, as well as some tips for staying mentally and physically well. Let's get started. Hey, Winnie, how are you going? Good, how are you? I'm doing well. So we were talking earlier about how I would describe you. And um, I love that you came up with the phrase that you're a fabulous Florida broad. Well, I think- Tell tell us about that. Sure. I think broad is a maligned term. I think people look at it and think, oh, that's that's terrible. But I think it's a woman who considers herself a broad is a person who really doesn't care what you think about her. And she's pretty happy with herself. And I, once you get to a certain age, why not be a broad and be fabulous while you're doing it? Absolutely. I totally agree. Now, we met in person back when back in the days when we could do that. Um, oh, was it 20... I don't know. It was a few years ago anyway now, maybe 19, 18? I think it was, uh, yeah, I think it was 19. Yeah, yeah. And I remember we were at a um, a session that we were doing Mm -hmm. um, on author building, uh, as in building your business. And I just remember how into it you were and just determined to create your own business. And so one of the things I wanted to talk to you today was around that experience of, you know, what got you on the path to writing because it's different to the things you've done before. You know, so how did you get started? And then talking a little bit about your writing and some of the things that you've discovered, you know, while you've been building this business brand now for a couple of years. So you're right for that one? Sure. Um, How'd you get started? I started a couple of novels that didn't get finished in the early 2000s. I had smaller children and yeah, that didn't work out so well for me. Um, I might even revisit them though. The manuscripts weren't bad, but I really, after I lost my mother um, in early 2017, in fact, this is her death anniversary today, I came to a crossroads internally. I mean, I had a good job and I you know, my family was doing well and and everything was okay, but I wasn't okay. I realized that probably continuing on the corporate wheel was just going to shred me. And people in their middle span of years, I think that happens to us often. It's not, you know, it's not, it's hardly unique to me, but I ended up quitting my job and uh, selling my house. My kids were graduating from high school and going on to colleges and whatnot. I was like, I'm, I'm, I need to do something. I felt pushed to move. So I ended up buying a condo out on the beach. <laughs> so I moved out there all by myself you know, and decided to be a fabulous broad. But <laughs> I started writing um, what came out to be To Walk in the World, which was a book that is, was very much a first book and it was awful. Uh, the draft was just horrendous. And I put it away for more, almost two years before I came back and rewrote the entire thing and published it in April of 2021. I'm very proud of the work. That was a complicated, complex book that was hugely emotional. And most of the comments I get from readers are just how they just cried when they read it and how much it touched them. And they just couldn't really phrase it that way for themselves, but they knew exactly what I was trying to convey. That's a pretty heady elixir. Um, And that kind of cemented for me because I had written other books prior to publishing To Walk in the World, but they were much more lighthearted. They were romances. They were fun to write. They were wildly creative. And they taught me how to write and publish consistently with quality work. But once I dropped To Walk in the World, I realized I was growing as an as an artist. I was growing as a creator. And to sit there and tell myself there's money in romance, I should just write romance, felt like another shred. And I realized that I'm always going to be growing. I'm never going to not want to reach into something new and discover it. Think you should be curious until you draw your last. And so for me, that kind of 
changed my trajectory with the launch of that book. And boy, did I get a lot of pushback from a lot of very smart people that I was making a huge mistake because multi-genres are hard. When you write in a genre and build an audience, which I had done faithfully um, for my first five books were all romances and I had faithfully tried to build my romance audience. Literary fiction with no sex really at all is a pretty big departure for a romance reader. And I wasn't sure how to bring them along. I knew the book would stand on its own. And so I had spent some time talking to other authors on, you know, how do you do this? Majority of them were women. And to a woman, they said, new pen name, new newsletter list, new marketing strategies. You've got to start all over. It's a lot of work. Just stop writing those things. And I thought, how can I stop writing the thing that made me understand that I'm an author with a really credible voice. And then I'm putting things together that people want to read. And I'm not saying they don't want to read my romances, but they're, they're paranormal. Some are paranormal sci-fi. They're very escapist. And we need that too. That, that need is equally important. But I knew that going into this, there was just no way I could just throw this book into my romance readers and expect it not to sink like a rock which it did. It didn't sell very well initially because I wasn't prepared for it. In hindsight, I would have done things a little bit differently. So conventional wisdom does say that um, for a different genre, you need a different pen name. It can um, put in a, a mix of genres together in bookstores, um, impacts, um, you know, like the also boughts and the suggestions and, you know, even the stores don't necessarily know what to do with you. So conventional wisdom does say, you know, create another pen name right under that, keep keep things apart. You've actually said this is the different genres you write in are all part of me and all part of my collective experience. And I want to keep it under the one pen name to keep it simple. And who doesn't love to be simple? You know, the simple your business is, I think the, the easier it is to actually make money. So What's the experience been of, you know, you said that you got pushback from, from other people about keeping it all together rather than compartmentalizing. What's been the discovery for you around being a multi-genre author? What would you say to other authors who perhaps want to do it, but they're not sure, can it actually work? I think that for me, the best exercise was to actually sit down and parse out who my reader was for my romance work and who my reader was for my lit fic and who my reader was for my new series, which was humorous paranormal fantasy and completely different than the other two categories. And then I sat down and I actually looked at those three lists and I started picking out the commonalities because to me, it's my voice that makes a reader pick up book two. Sure, they love their genre and they have some expectations, especially, for, you know, with romance, they want they want them to get together at the end and they want them to be happy. But they also read me because they like the fantastical world I'm creating and the way my characters interact with each other and the fact that my female characters are total badasses and take no guff. They are attracted to elements of the writing. So what I wanted to do was understand when I'm thinking about my reader's not expectations, that's really not a word I like, but what kind of an experience my reader is looking for when they fall into one of my books. I wanted to see where those intersections between those three genres of readers were. And I was really surprised with what I came up with. And it altered my branding drastically. I'm in the process, because I have so much time, to completely rebrand my website. I've got a new logo at an artist right now. Because what I want to do is make my, the things that are mine, my website and my newsletters and blog posts and things like that, I want those to be welcoming with the right kinds of verbiage that's going to appeal to all my readers. I don't want to write a top of newsletter and say, this one's just for you PNR folks. I want my readers to say, oh, her newsletter is here and open it up. And to do that, I needed to understand them better. And more than that, I needed to understand what about my brand was not going to work for those three groups and start trimming some stuff that was bad habits in my mind. You know, just, I cannot in good conscience ignore any aspect of my three groups of readers. They're all important to me and they're all instrumental in my being able to write another book. 
if I'm not selling books, I'm not much of an author. But at the same time, I don't want my newsletter or my blog interactions or my Facebook posts or any other social media. I've got one eye on TikTok and it's scaring the crap out of me. I don't want any of that to be just sales pitch and off-putting and, and buy my book. They get that from how many authors are on Facebook? You know, a million? How many buy my books do you get? I want somebody to say, oh, yeah, I feel that way. Or I never thought of that. That's cool. Whatever the reaction okay. is, I wanted to interact with the messaging about my style and my voice that's going to also show up in my writing. Because at that point, I think I'm actually respecting my readers the most. Yeah. Well, you know, my philosophy around um, one of the core concepts of building an author platform is that you need to understand who your reader is. So the reader avatar is absolutely vital. And I think what you have probably found is that by creating a reader avatar for your three different genres, you find the commonalities, but then between those three, and that's how you've been able to then branch out and brand, um, you know, the new brand, which includes those three genres. Um, so firstly, I just want to applaud you for that, because that's actually work that a lot of authors aren't prepared to do. It's this groundwork. So doing actually doing the reader avatar. So congratulations on that, can I just say. <laughs> when, yep. when you're going through the avatar, um, one of the exercises I get you to do is, you know, do like 100 things of, of your reader avatar. And usually the first couple, you know, the first 20 um, or so are fairly easy for people. But then it's, it gets more challenging to find out what they are. What do you reckon the top five would be um, between your three audiences. So what, you know, what were the top five that you reckon that they connected on? I think my readers genuinely care about the world. They may or may not be political. They may or may not have time to volunteer or be active, or maybe their church is where they put their effort, but they care. So when I incorporate little threads of um, social issues when groups of my characters aren't getting along and there's you know different kinds of confrontations coming up I know a reader that cares not only cares about the action sequence that's coming up but they care about this small subplot of emotional angst that deals with morality and deals with nobility and deals with doing the right thing even when it's difficult so I would say that's definitely one is that they care about the yeah. world around them. Um, they're also, they all care about themselves. They're, they're a little bit older. I think I'm writing for 40 to 70 year old people, but they care about themselves. Um, in To Walk in the World, I talked a little bit about um, the epiphany that that character went through as she grappled with being at a huge crossroads in her life, similar to the one I had encountered in my own. But I think most of my readers have experienced loss, or empty nest, or went back to school, or did something in that middle span that was really just for them. They changed their routines, and they're happier because they did. So I think self-care is another commonality that all of my, my people share. They like fantastic worlds. They want to believe probably not in magic wands and Harry Potter type level magic, but they want to believe that not everything they see is what is what. They want to believe that there's an element of fantastical in their worlds. They probably have tried some meditation and some yoga or done some, some you know, different types of retreats or deep thinking to clear out their minds or journaled just wrote it all out. Why, why am I making these stupid choices over and over? What am I hiding? Let, let me dig that out in, in my privacy of my journal. That kind of you know, desire to think that there's a reason in their, in their lives and that that reason could be fantastic, that there's a push from out, outer world energy or there is, there's you know, a little bit of magic here on earth. Not, not fantastical magic, but a little bit of magic. Something falls yeah. into your lap at the right time, roll up the toll booth and you, you're a dime short and then you see one in your cup holder that wasn't there a second ago, that kind of stuff. They, they love that little, oh, that's cool, you know? Yeah, yeah. So that's definitely one. I, I certainly do. It's stuff like um, 
not everything can be seen or explained is is how I I see it. Um, yes, yeah, stuff happens, and you just go. Yeah, it's those moments of serendipity, or yeah, you know. So yeah, it, you explained it much more um, better than I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's see. I think that they're overwhelmingly peaceful. They want peace in their lives, whether they're in high octane, complicated jobs that can be challenging, but can be very stressful, or they're in a relationship that needs more spark or, or something where they feel like if, if I can solve these issues in my life, I can have greater peace in my home or in my, in my work or whatever it is that they're they're doing or tackling in their world. Maybe they're taking care of an aging parent with Alzheimer's. You, that person needs a lot of peace in their life. Yeah. And so that, that ties somewhat back into the fantastical worlds element because they need a little bit of escape. And that's okay because that just lets the brain rest and be enveloped in something that just makes them relax and feel happy. And I think that wanting to, peace, either whether they've got it already or they're striving to find it is another common thread between my three reader groups. I, five, right? That's <laughs> four, four, is, four is good. Thank you. A five was way too many on the spot. <laughs> um, and what I'd just like to say to our listeners is go and follow uh, Winnie because I think what you're, what you're going to find it, or what you're going to see is a case study in a multi-genre author. So this is an author who knows um, her brand and who knows her readers for three different genres. And she, you know, just from what I've seen so far, it's just amazing how you've kind of wound it all together. You're bringing readers along. Some will buy all your books. Some will just buy, uh, you know, some here or there, but they're sticking with you no matter what kind of comes. And this is all part of the relationship building um, side of author marketing rather than the the side of author marketing that gets the most press I think is around uh, right to market you know go find the genre that's killing it and go write your 40k book in that genre and then you know establish yourself there and then you know go find the next genre and then you you know you go right there I love the way that you're doing it with relationship marketing where you're staying true to yourself you're not chasing the market but you're still writing to the market because you know who the market is. I'm ready. But I don't, yeah. And I don't think it's necessarily genre. Mm -mm. You're not writing to the genre market. You've got three different genres, but I think you're writing to a different. So just for other people, you know, for other authors, go and follow Winnie because I reckon this year you're going to get an excellent case study in how to set up uh, uh, yourself for multi-genre. Um, as a multi-genre author so go do that i just have a bit of water one sec well i wanted to point out that um i am this quarter revamping my website and my brand and everything else so if you ran off and looked at my stuff today it might not be finished but the journey is hopefully going to be within the first two quarters of this year the branding piece will be pretty much operational the language i'll be using in my newsletter is going to shift my newsletter template will definitely shift and uh, i want to be more real in my communications with my 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 folks my newsletter readers and my blog readers because if what my brand is is wrapped around my voice rather than my genres, I need to be sharing that voice in my intimate setting, which is my newsletter. So I want to be putting in things that are more observational based about anything, whether it's, you know, the day-to-day life or writing in general or whatever. But I want that treat to be the first thing that happens in my newsletter, that they are getting that little bit of writing intimacy with me and then I'll feature other authors in my author spotlight I want to show multiple genre writing in my newsletter regularly because if I'm asking them to cross over maybe they really just hate humorous fantasy but a cozy mystery Mm. so why not share that pot because they're gonna I believe in this in serendipity if I push this this healthy positive supporting to other authors out there it will come back to me and it doesn't have to be quid pro quo it just needs to be a circle yeah so 
Yeah, It'll definitely. And, it, and the other thing you've also um, understood and get very well is around the fact that a brand just doesn't happen overnight and nor do sales necessarily just suddenly spring. There, I, there is some foundational work to do and some leg work to do and then time for it to settle and um, come in. So the very fact that you are aware that it, you know, these things do take some time is also another point um, in your favour. You know, it's not, it's not instant. It's not, you know, like the, the movies and... Oh, yeah, I've got overnight fame. <laughs> My favorite author is Kay Gibbons, and she has a line in her book, Charms for the Easy Life, where uh, she says, uh, we were both lean horses for a long race. And I think that that's a really great approach, you know, to yeah. anything that you truly care about is instant gratification should never be the priority. First of all, if it's something you really care about, you want to enjoy the unfolding. And secondly, if it's really important to you, then going through it in a, at a reasonable pace provides opening doors and opportunities for you to meet like minds and explore new avenues of ways to market your book or uh, to meet another author where you guys might have readers that are very similar and maybe there's something to explore with, with trading books off with each other or something like that. Different ways to make it work, but you can't get there if you're just going fast the only place in my business that I go fast is writing because I just it's a good it. thing yeah I get in the story and you know get out of my way but yeah yeah um, you know yes we're having meatloaf again shut up and eat <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah but everything else you should be a breather uh you know I'm writing I'm currently writing um my 11th book and it should go to market at the very end of March and it doesn't even have a title yet but I'm absolutely in love with the story it's probably about 40 percent done at this point so it's coming along and when I'm writing that's the point is I want to be in my head I want to be unencumbered I want to be wholly focused to put the voice into the characters and let them tell their story and then when I'm marketing I'll put all my effort into that but neither one of those are more, I mean, the writing obviously is, is the horse and the marketing is the wagon getting tugged along behind it. But I think that it's important to remember that going too fast on the marketing is like putting blinders on your horse. It just doesn't work because you're missed too much because you're not giving yourself opportunities to just say, maybe I can try to incorporate that. Maybe not now, but later, just be open to a constantly shifting landscape on how to independently market your books. Hold for one sec. I have to let my dog out. So one of the things that um, I wanted to um, just talk to you about was um, your, um, this series. So Boogie Beach is the first book in it. Very, so, yeah. And the thing about writing in different genres, of course, is that this, yeah, they're different genres. And this one, though, is is quite different. So, you know, quickly step us through. Oh, and for my Aussies out there, um, notice the Speedos on the front. So um, in Australia, we call those budgie smugglers. And uh, I was telling uh, Winnie about <laughs> how we, we call Speedos different things over here. And um, we have a few other phrases as well, but I can't say those in... Um, <laughs> in a pg show but you know boogie beach so that whole you know what's it the record tell us about that and um was that the the genre that you wanted always wanted to write write in no i think at the point i when i started boogie beach i still didn't know what my genre the one i really felt represented my voice the best was going to be um but i think that boogie beach really is me it's my snark and it's my kind of at the world and <laughs> Kind of the, the idea that the world is just weird. And sometimes there's nothing you can do but jump in and pick up your oar and battle weird. Because we all have these like oddities in our lives that are just, well, it's always been that way or that we can't change that, which is exactly what's happening in Boogie Beach. Um, I'll give your reader, I'll sketch it in real quick, but 
the main character's name is Cleopatra O'Keefe and she goes by Patra and she is the keeper and it wasn't a job that she chose it chose her and so what she's done is she's been told that the job is to chronicle the line between the magical and, and real worlds and that magicals are superior and they can punish her and, you know, she can't do anything but, you know, serve some drinks on the magical side of the bar and chronicle the line. Well, she's kind of plucky. I, there's probably better words than that because she really is far more than that. But the more she digs, the more willing she is to question the history that she's been taught and that it was always like that and that there is no point in bucking that horse and she ends up taking on some pretty major players and what I liked about that was the whole time she's got this running conversation in her head about am I nuts you know I'm going to get my ass killed I can't believe I'm trying to do this but nothing's adding up and she's a smart woman with a good library in her house and she's willing to bet on herself that she can find the right answer and she does all of this with just this hilarious cast of characters it is a humorous fantasy novel so there's just lots of stuff to laugh at and I write I'm a pantser I don't plot at all and the more Boogie Beach unfolded because I would just sit down and I you know I just write some stuff and then I'd get done and I'd be like whoa <laughs> and I realized that's got to be truly my voice because this is just too weird to be anybody else and <laughs> But it's selling really well. And the second and third book are selling really well. So I think it's it struck a note with people. I mean, it, it's not a romance. Uh, I had actually talked to a successful author uh, in science fiction. And uh, she said that one of the things that really appealed to her about what she was writing was the arc of development of her main character over multiple installments of her of her series and I thought well shoot I kind of like that idea because with a romance you got to have a new couple every time and you can't really arc it out in depth and I thought well this would let me do that and I'm going to try it and boy the the series has just been so rewarding and I'm working on the fourth book right now so yeah I keep thinking how am I going to top that last you know storyline and then something pops up and I'm like oh well like this I guess you know <laughs> so we'll see I love it <laughs> well it's certainly um it, it's certainly funny there's some very very funny moments in it so highly recommend it for anybody who wants even just to go and give some uh humorous fantasy a try if you haven't done you know, read it before this is this is the book the series um, to give that a whirl on um, for sure so how would um, or other authors and readers um, find you? What's, what's all your details? Where can they go? Well, uh, my website would be the best place to start. And that's wwinkle.com with, you know, the okay. HTTP thingies in the front. But you type in wwinkle.com, you'll find me. Um, yep. I'm also, I publish wide, which means I publish um, on Amazon, but also uh, through Apple, Kobo, Barnes & Noble. Uh, I'm would really love people who like my work to ask their libraries to add me because I'm on overdrive. On my website, I keep a blog, but I also do a newsletter and you can sign up for that. And that's really where my focus is going right now. So if you're interested in reading excerpts of raw material or, you know, listening to me babble on about, you know, missing my cat or... <laughs> because it's been a while since I lost my kitty cat or just generally I live on a boat I like a barge went by today that was on this is not a wide river and the barge was like 20 feet from the back of my boat so I you know, I'll, I'll probably put a newsletter together on that because it's pretty wild when it happens yeah um, and I I think if you get to a certain point you're the sum of your experiences and so when I write my newsletters I really try to just put in all the little interesting glittery details to make it seem more approachable everybody can say oh I you know I've heard my pie on Christmas too things like that it doesn't you know have to be I'm I feel bad I'm really not selling this well because I'm making it sound like I'm very mundane and boring and most of the time it's pretty funny stuff but just come sign up and you'll find out. I'm also on most Absolutely. Of the, 
I'm on mm-hmm. most of the social media. I'm on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. I'm not super active on Twitter because sometimes Twitter's just nasty and I try to show up, but I don't like nasty. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm looking at maybe doing, um, my uh, sweetheart's daughter is an active, active TikToker and she was tearing it up while they were visiting over Christmas. And I'm going to go take a look. We'll see. Because I want to add a video component to my website and to my newsletters and that might be a place to cross purpose that so I'm reaching new people. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, I think this is this is the year for, for Winnie Winkle. So um everybody go and find the channel to follow Winnie on, whichever works for you, but definitely sign up for her newsletter. So go to wwinkle.com, um, go to do that, read her books. They're they're a great laugh. Um so yes. Go do that. Thank you very much, uh, Winnie, for coming and talking uh, to me today. Appreciate it. And um, we look forward to seeing what you do this year. Thank you so much. I appreciate the invite. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Hey, thanks for joining us today. You know we've got way more information we want to share with you to increase your book sales. So please come and join me at facebook.com. Get my book out there.